Back in March 2021, the Canadian Electricity Association published Advancing Women in Skilled Trades, Best Practices Guidance Document. Joining Electrical Business Magazine to talk about this document and some of the lessons learned are Manitoba Hydro's Angela Driver and Hydro Ottawa's Lynn Perron Garvey, who both served on the project steering committee, and Justin Cruson from the Canadian Electricity Association, who served as project manager for the Best Practices Guidance document. Uh, now, Justin, what prompted the creation of this document? So at a, a more macro, wider level, I'd say, frankly, the, the data and the numbers prompted the creation. So I'll just throw some at you here. Under 10% nationally um, is, is kind of the percentage of women in the skilled trades in our sector. And when you dig into certain specific professions, I'll take power line technicians, PLTs for one, it's between 1% to 2%. So certainly that's something that's recognized in the sector as an item we need to work on. And, and that drove it in the macro sense, but this specific project, a number of years ago, uh, some of our distribution council members, now our distribution council is composed of senior management from operations and engineering across the country. Uh, they actually prioritize this issue at, at our face-to-face -face meetings. And it started pretty ad hoc. Um, pretty much just best practice sharing each other, talking about what they were doing to drive progress on the issue and just trying to drive some learnings that way. But we pretty soon recognized that we could learn from each other. Certainly there were some leaders that were farther along in the journey than others, but you know, everyone had a unique take, unique policies, procedures, experience that we could all learn from. So we thought it would be really useful for the sector if we threw this all into one document that could really serve as a benchmark to uh, drive progress moving forward. So that, that's where the document originated from. Interesting. So, uh, you know, all these discussions, everybody's working on something. Some are, are more advanced, some maybe are playing catch up and, and why not try to get all these best practices into one document? So, so well done you for that. Uh, now, I imagine uh, it, it could be seen as a somewhat mind boggling task when you're trying to piece together all these bits of information from across the country. So what goals, uh, parameters did, did you set for yourselves as a team as you, apart, uh, sorry, as you embarked upon this project? Uh, what, what was the end game that you were hoping for? And for that, let me turn to Angela. Sure, thank you, Anthony. Great question. So it, it was challenging for sure. At first, we didn't quite know where to start. So we wanted to look at a broad approach for acknowledging and addressing gender differences in the trades, but recognized this is a wide and challenging topic. Uh, we knew that as member companies and leaders that we want and, and want to ensure that equal treatment, acceptance, promotion of both females and males within our organizations. We also know that there's good gender diversity programs and practices in place in many of our companies. We're all doing things somewhat similar. We're doing things somewhat different. Um, so an assessment and a compilation and a summary of these successful approaches we thought would be useful so that we could share in um, learnings together. So we set out first to record the current practices for female tradespeople and line workers by conducting interviews of member utilities. And then next, uh, research was done into gender diversity practices and other related sectors to find further successful practices that we might be transferable to the trades in the utility industry. And then finally, the summary of these findings were, findings were created in this report, no, noting gaps and promoting the learnings that we found in pulling this together. But your question about the end game really is to provide this information to enable companies to adopt, build, and build on best practices, and that the learnings that we would find ultimately with the goal of being able to grow organizational bench strength to enhance gender inclusion, collaboration, and diverse team of thinkers to be able to problem solve and allow opportunities kind of equally across the board. 
I like that that bench strength term. I I learned that earlier this year, and it's it, it's such a fantastic uh, uh, way to sort of understand what it is that uh, that we're trying to build here. Uh, now, before I move on to uh, my next point, uh, Lynn, did you have anything that you wanted to add to Angela's comments? Uh, no, not not really. I mean, I think she's she really captured what we were trying to do. You know, we know that that our industry is very willing to share. And that's one of the great things about working in our industry is that um, folks are prepared to share uh, their best practices and then are thrilled when other organizations uh, implement those best practices, right? So that was the thinking, right? That, that there's so much going on and let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's just, you know, share and and then uh you know maybe we'll find some some things that other organizations are doing that we're not doing and and implement those because we're we're really all in this together in 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 the truest sense uh and we're all we're all committed i've i've heard it said uh imitation is the highest form of flattery mm -hmm. so to your point why reinvent the wheel when there are so many good examples out there uh and and this sort of brings me to my next question i'm i'm actually excited to uh to get your thoughts on this one so the report does identify uh several gender equity best practices in the realms of recruitment training tools mm -hmm. uh, role models and more uh so now of these best practices and and i don't want to go through them all in detail because i will encourage people to download the report and and read it and and really consume it get into it uh but of those best practices in the report uh, from either within the electricity sector or or from without, uh, which of those strike a chord with you? Who who is doing something really neat, really innovative? And and Lynn, I'll start with you. Great. So I, I would say everyone is doing something neat, and so I'm. Uh, I'll go through a couple of examples that really resonated with me. So. For me, it starts with, you know, we have really good trades jobs in, in our sector, but you don't know about those unless you work in our sector. And, and certainly, um, you know, women don't know about, about those trades jobs. So some of the best practices from the document are really, you know, from Manitoba Hydro, which is where Angela's from, and their open sessions, uh, their information sessions and open houses, right? where they, they invite women to come and learn about the different trades and, and the courses that are required uh, as early as high school, um, you know, as well as the rates of pay, because that's, that's, that's certainly a, a driver. The other thing, women need to see women. So we need to make sure that when we do our outreach activities, that we use our, our, our trades women. And I think um, Quebec Hydro uh, you know, is cited in the document and, uh, and does that uh, really well. We need to include more women on interview boards. We need to get different perspectives, right, on, on interview boards. So we need to make sure those interview boards are balanced. Pre-apprenticeship programs, uh, a number of our companies have those in place, Task Power, for, uh, for example partnering with educational institutions, uh, generally colleges, in training that next generation and ensuring that that next generation is diverse. So um, for us at, at Hydro Ottawa, we're really proud of the partnership that we have with uh, Algonquin College in the delivery of a two-year Powerline Technician Diploma Program. And that program is also part of another program at Algonquin College called We Saved You a Seat. And what it means is that 30% of the seats in the PLT diploma program are saved for women. So that's 30% of 48 seats. Um, so we're, we're really proud of, you know, of, that, uh, of that initiative. And then of course, when you're in our sector, and you're, you're a woman and you're working in the trades in our sector, you need mentors, you need um, you know, like-minded employees 
that can be there as a support system uh, for you. So Electra Utilities and Hydro One are the examples that we quote uh, in, you know, in our document that have many different uh, approaches to, uh, you know, to helping women be successful. And what we do at Hydro Ottawa is we talk to the women in our in our uh, in our trades uh, positions. Um, our chief electricity distribution officer speaks with them and and asks, you know, what what their challenges are, what their experiences are, so that then we know what to do. What you know, what do we need to do in our work environments, in our culture, in order to make sure that. Uh, you know, that they can be uh, successful. And I think the, the, Angela mentioned this as well, what are other sectors doing, other like sectors, right? And the, the one sector I've always liked is uh, the fire departments across the country. Um, their, you know, their, their leadership is committed to a, a diverse workforce. I think they're further ahead than, than, than our sector. You know, one of the favorite initiatives of mine that uh, the Ottawa Fire Department does is they have a camp for teenage girls. And uh, I think they're 14 and 15 year olds. And they do this every year. And the girls get to learn what it's like to be a firefighter really, really, you know, early on so that they know what courses they need to continue to take in high school so that they you know they can get excited about about this career really on and and you know and i think that that's one of the best practices from you know from other like sectors that uh, that, that are pretty cool now, let me turn over to Angela. Angela, I don't know if Lynn left much for you to say. I don't know if she went through the entire document, but uh, what, uh, what best practice or best practices resonated with you as, as someone who's do doing something really well? Yeah, you know, um, she did cover it very well, uh, but just to highlight a couple of points that did resonate with me personally, um, I have an, I'm an engineer, I'm an engineering background, so I've done some time in the field, of course, through that process, not, the, not like a tradesperson would, but certainly working alongside tradespeople. And, you know, the area that was interesting to me with respect to what some of the learnings were and really resonated is things like tools and um, just ensuring your clothing fit. It happens on a day-to-day -day basis where your clothing doesn't fit appropriately, appropriately and can be a safety hazard. So some learnings from what other utilities are doing to ensure that we have appropriately fitting gear, whether it's fall arrest equipment that is appropriately fit. Uh, so that's one area that I thought really resonated with me personally. And then of course, to the point of education that we were talking about a little bit earlier than uh, was, is some of the programs that are have uh, the pre-apprenticeship or pre-placement um, programs whereby it allows, um, attracts uh, women uh, and other diverse areas to come forward and be able to enhance some of their prerequisite requirements. Maybe they didn't um, go through a full base physics program to begin with that you might require as an electrician trade. And that is a program that we can help bring people's qualifications up to ensure that they have that basis by which they can then move into the trade with everything that they require and that not be a barrier. So those are a couple of areas to highlight. Well, now, sadly, Justin, I saved you for last and, and I don't know what's left for you, but but I'll ask it anyway. So of the uh, the various best practices that we see in that uh, in that document, uh, what what resonated with you? Yeah, no, that's that's quite an exhaustive list but you know there's a couple sections to the document so we definitely had this inventory of best practices at utilities right now today uh, but some of the gaps and i think principles for improvement were pretty interesting which came out through the the project so i'll, I'll give you two that strike me so the one is we all we all kind of coalesced around the um the issue of we need to be prioritizing much like edi in general nowadays uh, prioritizing this issue at our boards, with our suppliers, with our union partners, um, really with the, the entire supply chain. So that, that's one that really struck me. 
The second one is these win-wins that came out of the project were, were super cool uh, for me, at least, you know, not being an HR person. Um, and I'll give you an example of that. So lightweight tools, uh, you think, okay, maybe they're just for women, so they, they enable them to do the job. But no, they really make everyone's work easier, more sustainable, uh, based on where you are at, at your period in life. You, you know, you may need the tools, whether or not you're a female or male or anything else. So that, that's really uh, two of the, the big takeaways for me there. What I'd like to get into is uh, the uh, the formation of this document started with conversations, started with people swapping ideas, uh, understanding that there was a, a need and a desire to sort of codify these best practices into a document. Now, as you were getting into the document's creation and doing interviews and research, what preconceptions might you have had at the start of the process that uh, changed, altered, completely dismissed by the end of the process. Uh, Justin, I'd like to start with you. So I think the, the first one that strikes me is I felt out of my element, frankly. Um, I don't have a human resources background, so that's why we pulled in some of the experts in HR, like Lynn, to sit on the steering committee. But interestingly, that's also my biggest takeaway, I guess, or, or what changed for me, because I think a lot of this stuff is very intuitive and we're all experts in a way. So I'll, I'll give you two specific examples that kind of struck me. So we talked a little bit about this concept of priming the pump, uh, as I put it, but really just building that, that interest in our trade and our sector from a young age. And you know we don't do enough of that, frankly. And I think there's some marketing to be had there as well. It's an exciting sector. If you look at electric vehicles, all the smart grid gadgets, uh, the blockchain applications, it's a fun sector to be in. And we need to be doing that young. And to use a bad fishing analogy, I suppose, you know, you really have to hook them young if you're going to reel them in later in life. So that that's something the, the sector needs to do. And we uncovered, we need to be more active uh, pre-high school so that they're showing up later at the apprenticeship level and, and the rest. Uh, the second takeaway for me was, and maybe this is more of a, a male perspective, but we all see this stuff um, daily. We're all in a way experts on it, but you really need to take note of it. So I've worked with my hands for much of my life uh, in pretty male dominated areas. And you know, one example, this is a bit of an extreme one, but it, it is an example. Um, one forestry job I had, I, when I think back, all the women's uniforms were, were kind of baggy and the safety shirts didn't fit, but that never really registered with me. You know, you're missing the low hanging fruits and the issues if you're not looking and aware of them. So that really struck me because if you're not giving folks the tools they need coming in the door, you can't expect them not to leave out the back door when they don't have them because uh, that, that wouldn't work for me myself. No, I, I like that you mentioned that uh, everybody is uh, experts in something. And, and so it's great to have everyone as, as part of that committee putting together this document so that uh, everyone's input and, and observations you know, can, can be registered. They can make a difference. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, now, let me move over to Angela. Uh, Angela, did you have any uh, preconceptions, notions uh, as you embarked upon this process that, that may have changed or perhaps even been strengthened by the end? Yeah, good question. Um, having been uh, in the sector for a while, there's some things, I think to Justin's point, just building on that, that you take for granted and, and don't always really appreciate or happening. So I maybe was a little bit of the opposite end of the spectrum from what um, Justin was referring to where, yeah, of course this is happening. Of course we're building on this. We'll, we'll find lots of material. So I was pleasantly surprised that we have seen lots of overlaps in areas where we're growing, um, but recognizing that the gaps are certainly there. And I think um, the recognition that there are the low hanging fruit, again, to build on what Justin was saying, available to us, but if you don't have the awareness that those are even available, then it's very difficult to get them implemented. And what, and then further, by growing the numbers and more diverse backgrounds, 
particularly in the area of gender in the trades, that awareness grows and it becomes like a, a, a snowball kind of rolling. But if there's a lack of awareness and there's not even enough people to be able to bring that forward, then it continues to be just a blind spot. So I, I'm, I was, the preconceptions I had was uh, dispelled by this, that we are growing, we are improving things, but we have a long way still to go just to ensure that people are aware of some of the barriers that we may not even appreciate are there. And you make it sound so simple too, Angela, just uh, open our eyes, be aware, and, and the answers will come to us. <laughs> But, <laughs> but but exactly while it sounds easy it's probably not simple and and hence the the need to keep working on it uh lynn now i've saved you for last and and hopefully uh, uh there's been uh, something left for you to say in terms of uh preconceptions notions you may have had uh sorry may have had uh at the beginning and then when we get to the end yeah i was um so impressed by the commitment of the d council so you know, as an HR professional, as a member of the HR committee of the, of the CEA, you know, these are issues we talk about all the time. Um, these are issues I talk to, to my, my own staff about uh, all the time. And this, it's an agenda that, that we're trying to move forward. But to, to hear and to witness the commitment from the operational folks, it's not just an HR issue. It's a, it's an operational issue. It's a business issue. And it's at the forefront now. And as a sector, we're being very honest and very open about it. We, we want more women in our trades. And that was phenomenal for me. Like it was such a... Um, it was so satisfying, right? To to know that that you know, and I think I said it earlier. We you know we are all in this, and we are all committed. Uh, in in the preface of the report, um, there's there's a sentence that I pulled out, and uh, it reads as follows: Indeed, this guidance is only a starting point, and we recognize that the sector will need to continue to advance efforts in support of gender diversity and inclusion. Uh, and so I sort of want to end on this point, and Angela, I'll start with you. So if this document is the starting point, what comes next? What is coming next? Well, maybe I'll start with what do we do with the practices that we've learned about. So of course, as member utilities, we need to assess the practices that we currently have and within our organization and what aligns and what doesn't align with some of these findings. Where can we enhance where we maybe fall short? And again, we need to do that really bravely and honestly. Um, assessing the areas that include all the areas we've talked about, we need to look across our recruitment practices what are we doing to build support networks for women in the trades within our, our areas? Ensuring that we talked about the tools and equipment and tire for members that those are available and there aren't barriers to being able to obtain those. Enhancing technical education and uh, ensuring that we're training um, and assisting with that training in, these, in this targeted group. So finally then to further advance the profile of the trades as a viable profession for women is really important for us to be moving forward. We need to build that partnership with other utilities, continue as we've done here, with organizations like government agencies, educational institutions, again, kind of get them young, uh, and other industry associations to promote wherever we can um, that this is a really great, uh, these are really great areas for women to be um, spending their careers in and learning and growing and ensuring their barriers are broken down as much as possible would be where we need to go. You know, I'm, I'm glad that you said, uh, and if I understood you right, that you know the, the, the first and most important next step is to actually take that document and do something with it and assess your own organization to see where you're at and what you could be doing better. So that's an excellent first step. You know, let's not allow this report to just collect dust until the next report comes out. Um, so now, uh, Justin, uh, Lynn, I'll save you for last. I haven't heard from Justin in a while. So Justin, what comes next now that this report is is written and it's out there what should be happening next 
Yeah, sure. So I think Angela did a good job summarizing some of the, the obvious next steps. And, and I'll just uh, back that up with saying members really need to, well, industry participants need to get out there and look at the recommendations and make sure they're being applied. And I've already seen a number of members doing just that. Uh, just, just to um, note one, Maritime Electric uh, has had a recent campaign ongoing to recruit female and, and women to their, their trades ranks. And you know, I saw many of the recommendations verbatim. And, uh, and one of the, actually the leaders for that initiative at the company was on our steering committee for the report. So um, that's nice to see, but I think moving forward, and uh, this is maybe a bit of a higher level point, but I think it's incumbent and it is becoming more common, but make sure that these issues are important to your organization at the highest levels. So have them as a standing item on your board, your board meetings, let's say. And I know EDI is kind of taking hold, so it's on most boards standing items list, but perhaps break this one out because this is a particularly acute issue for the sector and uh, it deserves special attention. And by revisiting that regularly with decision makers, you, um, you can see whether progress is being made or not, and that can kind of drive action throughout the, the company. I like the point that you make that this needs to be front of mind uh, for the leaders of an organization, uh, making sure that the inclusion is happening and steps are being taken. So I, I'm glad you mentioned that. And I am glad to hear that uh, one of your steering committee members is already taking recommendations from that report and implementing them. Uh, so it's not it, it's not static. It's it's alive. People are using it. That's great to hear. Uh, now, Lynn, I've I've saved the sort of last word for you. Uh, we've got the the report. Uh, Angela and Justin have weighed in. Now, what do you think should be the next steps? Yeah, I think Angela and Justin have summarized it well. Right. It's it's continuing to work together, continuing to share best practices. And I think, I think it's different now, right? Uh, it, we're not just talking about it, we're putting plans in place, we're, we're doing gap analysis. Um, you know, everyone is committed, our, our senior leadership, obviously the HR folks, the operational folks. And as Justin said, our, our board of directors want to know they want to know what what we're doing they want to know you know what our outcomes are our shareholders want to know as well right um so so i think i think it's a different it's a different time and this report um you know really um will help us all you know move forward so you know for me and and i have a 16 year old and a, and a 22 year old but i remember when they were in primary school and they you know the kids would draw pictures of what they wanted to be when they when they grew up and you you know you would see firefighters you would see police officers you would see teachers you would see nurses but you would never see um you know one of one of our trades right so you know, I think that the, 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 the dream for me is that at one point, you know, once we've done all this work, there is a, a little girl that's in grade two or three and that draws a picture of a female power line technician of what she wants to be when she grows up. And once we see that on the primary school walls, we'll have done our job. So it's big, it's audacious, but it's doable. I love that. Uh, what a perfect way to conclude. I'm, I'm just picturing the, uh, the junior kindergarten's wall of art in the school hallway and then seeing that female power line technician. Mm -hmm. what, a, what a perfect image to, to end this with. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today, Lynn, Angela, and Justin, about advancing women in the skilled trades, uh, the guidance document put forth uh, from members of the Canadian Electricity Association. And I, I do hope that uh, there will be subsequent, perhaps, follow-ups in terms of maybe what members are doing, uh, what they've learned and gleaned from this document, and perhaps some new things uh, that will be added to future guidance documents. But until that day comes, thank you so much for joining me.
Thank, Thank you. you.